Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the SwiftTech MCX 462T Thermoelectric Heatsink. What is included in this package is a motherboard gasket. You also get a neoprene sticker. This is for the back of the motherboard. Also four hex lock nuts four standoffs, a bunch of fiber washers, as well as some nylon spacers, and you also have these snap rivets, these are for the fan, and as well a wire connector and some thermal compound, a manual with very good instructions of how to put all this together and get it to work, and of course the heatsink. This particular heatsink is very similar to their standard MCX 462 heatsink. However, this one here is a little different because it has this thermal electric module at the bottom or Peltier. It also has a copper block here at the bottom as well as this massive copper base which is standard with the other model and all of these ribbed fins here at the top to give you excellent heat dissipation. And you can see here that the bottom is very smooth. This is going to allow great contact between this surface and your CPU. Before purchasing this product be sure that your motherboard will support it because you need a motherboard that has four holes outside the socket. If you don't, it will not work. Now, if you have a motherboard already installed into your system, you're going to need to remove it from the system. And please read the manual very, very carefully. Go through it maybe a couple of times if you need to, to get it right. Because if you don't get it right, it's a possibility that you might fry the CPU because of the different standoffs, the spacers, the washers, etc. So, now let's go through the procedure here. First of all, if you have a motherboard with large holes, you're going to need a fiber washer as well as a nylon spacer, of course, going through this standoff. So again, what you would do here, just to show you, use the standoff, go ahead, put this fiber washer here through first, and then you're going to need this nylon spacer, then this goes through the top of your motherboard. And then at the bottom of the motherboard, you're going to need this fiber washer and this hex lock nut. Now I'm going to show you this actually in action a little later on, but I want to go through this first to make sure that you know exactly how to do this. Now let's just go to another procedure here. Maybe your motherboard has a small non-grounded holes. Well, in that case, you just use the standoff and the fiber washer again through the top and again at the bottom the fiber washer and the lock nut. Now maybe you have a motherboard with small grounded holes well in that case no washers are required go ahead just put the standoff through the top of the motherboard and again at the bottom use the fiber washer and the hex lock nut. In my particular case, I'm using a motherboard that is non-grounded and it has small holes. So I'm going to use the standoff as well as one black fiber washer here and just go ahead and insert it through the top of the board. Now, on the bottom of the board, I have to install that black fiber washer as well as this hex lock nut. You can see here now at the bottom of the motherboard, you've got the standoff sticking through. Go ahead then put the black fiber washer on over that standoff then go ahead and screw on that hex locking nut. Once you have installed all the standoffs correctly the next thing to do is fill the socket here with dielectric grease and dielectric grease is used to prevent condensation where the parts are exposed to cold and this grease has to go inside the cavity all the way up and going over these small socket pinholes here everything in this area has to be covered with this dielectric grease once you've done that go ahead slip the CPU in here make sure that the CPU is seated correctly then go ahead and apply a paper thin coat of thermal compound to the CPU the next thing to do is install the motherboard gasket. There's paper on the back. Peel that off and it will actually stick. Make sure you have it fitting very well on the board. Press it all the way down. And the next thing to do is install this neoprene sticker. And this actually goes right behind the socket on the back of the motherboard. 
Now take the motherboard and install it inside of your case. Once you've done that, you can then go on to installing the heatsink on top of the motherboard. But remember, when you are doing this, you want to have your case laying flat. Installing the heatsink is very, very simple to do. Just lodge it on top so these four screws right here correspond to the standoffs that are actually installed on the motherboard. Once that's done, go ahead, use a screwdriver, and tighten all of these four screws. And before continuing on to the next step, what I recommend you do is just mount this down first. Then go ahead, back off all the screws, take it out again. Now, the reason why you should do this is you really want to be sure that the base of this heatsink is touching your CPU. And of course, there will be an impression left of the thermal grease on the heatsink. And once that's done, go ahead and mount it back. That again is just to make sure that the heatsink is touching the CPU because if it's not, you're going to fry your CPU and you do not want that to happen. The next thing to do is install a fan on top of the heatsink. Now I'm using a Vantec 80 millimeter tornado fan. This thing pushes 84 CFMs and is extremely loud. However, you do need a fan that is this powerful in order to keep this thing cool. Now to attach it to the top, you use these snap rivets and you simply insert these at the top here and push down and basically you do that three other times and the fan is installed and remember to mount the fan so the airflow is going towards the motherboard the final part of this installation is to take these wires which come from the thermoelectric module and connect them into this wire connector now this is actually a euro style wire connector and the one it does is just make the connection very simple between this right here and your power supply you just go ahead and insert the wires go ahead then and screw it all the way down here at the top until it makes contact and is very secure now you do this with the power supply feed as well and let me go ahead and finish this up so those are tight now you can then go ahead and attach the power supply feed to the other side and when you do that make sure you're going from black to black and red to yellow and once you have finished the installation do a final inspection just to be sure that you've done everything properly just to give you an idea of the type of fan that's needed to keep this product cool I'm going to go ahead now and turn on this fan. Remember, this is the Vantec 80 millimeter tornado fan. The results were very good. When you have a heat sink like this coupled with a excellent fan, you'd expect some fantastic results. And certainly there were some great results. I was using an AMD 1900 plus as well as a Vantec 470 watt power supply. I was able to get the AMD 1900 plus up to around the 2200 plus range using a voltage of 1.85. The idle temperature was around 10 degrees Celsius as well as the max low temperature around 35 degrees C. This product does perform very well but only when coupled with a very fast spinning fan. You cannot couple this product with a low quality very quiet fan. You need to have something that's going to move a lot of air onto the surface of this heat sink to dissipate the heat as quickly as possible. If you are not into loud fans and you can't handle it, this would not be the product for you. But remember, this product is meant for the extreme overclocker, someone who's very serious about overclocking, and maybe that person would not mind having a very loud fan to get maximum performance out of their CPU. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, be sure to pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Until the next time, take care.